Well, I hope you all have had uh, good weeks after following Easter. I hope you've been able to uh, uh, experience some, uh, some good family time and also experience 30 degree weather and 80 degree weather. So that's fantastic. Well, before we get started, I have one announcement to make. And uh, uh, last weekend was more than just Easter for a young couple in our congregation. But uh, we had uh, Travis Falls, who's our tech guy uh, and uh, communications guy, and uh, Katie Quarles got engaged. So uh, let's, let's congratulate them. So, really cool. So, an exciting time in your lives and and many more years that will be thrilling. So, it will be fantastic. But it's fitting because then we look at this uh, up on the wall there and we see, or up on the whatever the screen, and we see the word confidence, which apparently Travis had some confidence going into that. Uh, But uh, that was good. Uh, But confidence is something that we as humans, uh, we have tried to figure out, that we try to uh, learn in some ways. I think from early on in our life, we, we, we... find out that when we have to go up like in elementary school and give a speech, we have to have some kind of confidence. And in the middle school, we may figure out that, you know, we have to shoot a free throw and, and to win the game or just to shoot a free throw in general. It takes confidence. I don't know. But then, uh, and then we move on to high school and even later in life, you know, just that idea of that confidence is, is important. Uh, high school, it may be just trying to have the confidence in making the, the right choices, the confidence of uh, if you choose on to go to, to college, what college to go to. And then we see that confidence definitely carries over into our occupations and, and the things that we do, uh, how we carry ourselves at, at our workplace, how we deal with other people in business, and how we do all uh, the things that we uh, have present ourselves. It, it, it makes a big difference in how you how you do. So confidence is big, and I, I think it's always hilarious because uh, you, what, what, uh, a lot of times we see a lot of posters for confidence, you know, and those motivational things that try to give you confidence, and it's people jumping through the sky and people raising up their hands on top of the mountains. But I, I always think this one's pretty good. The uh, the cat there just uh, <laughs> walking there, pretty. I'm a cat. You know, that's what he's thinking. I'm a cat. Don't mess with me. So, but, uh, but confidence is sort of uh, we've learned in life, or we're learning in life, that it's in a lot of ways a necessity, uh, how, how we do it. And some of us are like this cat, and we're, we may have the danger of being overconfident. You know, we, we just, well, I can't do anything wrong. You know, I'm perfect. And we have that overconfidence. Then there's some of us who... We just continue to have a lack of confidence and just can't, just can't, you know, ever think that you're good enough to be able to do something. And so it's, it's a tricky thing because, because, uh, there's that humble confidence in there that we need to have as, as people and as healthy people. A definition of confidence that I found that I sort of like and I think it works here today is, is confidence is generally described as a state of being certain either that a hypothesis or prediction is correct or that a chosen course of action is the best or most effective. And so the focus here is, you know, is that we may not know the outcome yet, but we have confidence that this is, this is what's going to happen. I'm, I'm sure that as Butler was waiting in the wings to go out to uh, the play the championship game, uh, the coach wasn't saying, well, a good chance, you know, they have a bunch of McDonald's all-stars, they're really good, so we have no chance of playing. No. The coach gave a speech of confidence, saying we're going out there to win. We're going out to win. Fortunately, that didn't happen. It's all a moment of silence. But anyway, but, but, but we have that confidence that is something that we want to be perceived uh, on us. And there was a kid uh, over in Ohio uh, who, when he was growing up, just a phenomenal basketball player, just a, a great kid, so good that in high school they were televising his high school games on ESPN. Uh, prime time, ESPN slots, and, and so much so that uh, it was, he was so beloved by his state that he was drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers. So he was able to stay in state, able to stay. And, and people have just generated all this excitement about this individual, this young man. Uh, and they give him the title. What's his title? What, what do they call him? King James. Yeah. I mean, they, they love this guy. And so much, you know, right out of high school, he had the shoe contract. He's just a big guy. And this, this is the slogan that if you would go into Cleveland, it would billboards that are on sides of buildings that say, we are all witnesses. We are all witnesses. And so you have, in general, you have a state that is 
is, is confident in this young man. You have a team that's confident in this man. You have a, an organization, the NBA, that is confident in this man that he is going to be great. That he's going to be great. And then you even have, uh, you have the, the team and the city all behind him saying, we are going to witness championship upon championship. The problem is that it's Cleveland and they're championship prone. But they all are behind this, supporting it. And we hear language like this, and what does it make us think of? We instantly think of like the Christian story, you know. We think of people of faith. We are all witnesses, you know. We think, but here they've used that. And what it's saying is that people have a full confidence in this one individual that great things will come from him, that he will bring great things. What a confidence that is. And so for the rest of the sermon, I will be wearing, because I want to be like LeBron James. So I'll just put that on. Um, If you know LeBron James, he wears a headband. So No, I'll take that off because I don't think I've washed it since Ultimate Frisbee last year. So... But that confidence, that confidence that people have around things, have around individuals, have around hobbies, have around uh, ideas, is important. But there is nothing more important than having a confidence through Christ. There is nothing more important than having a confidence through Christ. Last week was a celebration. Last week was when we come together as believers in Jesus Christ, as we come as followers of Christ, as we come trying to figure out who Jesus is, we celebrate because the tomb was empty. The tomb was empty. And we celebrate it. We celebrate the fact that we cannot find Jesus' bones here on this earth. His bones are not in a tomb. His bones are not in the grave. But Jesus Christ has risen. We finished last week singing the song of declaration that Jesus Christ lives. He lives. He lives. He lives within my life. That is what we believe. And that is what we celebrated last week. And now the question is, is do you have confidence in that? Do you have confidence in the Easter story? Do you have confidence that Christ died and gave us that hope and redemption that Brian talked about last week? Do you believe? And do you not just believe, but do you display a confidence in your life that Christ is indeed Savior of all? This is something that we need to live out. And this Scripture verse that we're going to read, we need to have confidence in this. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through Him as, your, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to, to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put Him to death by nailing Him to the cross. But God, raised Him from the dead, freeing Him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on Him. Do we have confidence when we read that passage? Do we lift up our hands on, and, and rejoice and could be a cover of an inspiration music album? I don't know, inspiration music. But do we have that confidence that Christ rose again? And do we live in a way that we know that Christ will bring all things around? Uh, there's, a, there's a passage here, that, or not a passage, just something that I want to read to you uh, that I think is, is what we need to understand and live out. Something that the early church fathers and mothers, the, the early disciples believed. And it says, Jesus has raised from the dead. Jesus is raised from the dead. That's truth. We have confidence in that. If we declare that we are followers of Christ, we have confidence in that. With this in mind, God deserves our confidence. He will bring us through any difficulties. And we will once again be joyful because our hope through the resurrection of salvation of eternal life.